Okay, Jeff, I'm going to show you two cool tricks for your Christmas show. One is called a travel mat, and the other is a, uh, is a compositing trick that a lot of people don't realize, although it's pretty simple. So I'm going to launch your Chris a project here called Christmas Show. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing in some media. Well, in my project folder here, you have given me the blue grunge background, and you've given me the frame. And I'm going to bring those in from the PCT folder and put them in my graphics folder right there. I also have some other media that I've created. There's the kids clip, which I won't use for your legal reasons. And I have a sample key and I have this drawing clip and I have the sample key plus alpha. The reason I have the sample key plus alpha, I'm going to put those in the media folder, is that this is not a demo about chroma keying and I don't want to get into that. Next thing I want to do is I want to open up uh, Photoshop and in Photoshop I have your um, PNG file that you sent me of uh, just the frame. Now here's a cool trick I'm going to show you. What I want to do is I want to make an image that is exactly the shape of the hole inside the frame. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to come down in the corner here and make a new layer and I'm going to fill that layer with um, black. Okay, So click there. I'm going to do option delete which is uh, fill with the foreground color and then I'm going to drag that underneath the frame. So there's my frame. Now what I want to do is I want to make a black thing that's exactly the shape that you have inside your frame here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lasso tool which is this guy and I'm holding down the option key. I'm going to click once there, once there, once there, once there and release. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select, mm, invert and I'm going to delete. So it looks as though I have a black thing that's the size of the hole, but the problem is when I turn off the um, frame, you immediately see, oh gee, that's just a square thing, and I want it to have all this character and all this grungy look to it. So what I'm going to do is if I hold down the command key and click on the frame, it selects everything that is the frame. The way I like to think of it is it selects every active pixel in that layer by hitting command click. So what it's done is select everything that's the frame. If I come down here and make sure that I have my black square layer selected and hit delete, I now have, the result of that, is a black thing that is exactly the size of the hole that is um, the frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect command D and now I want to do a save as and I want to save this in the picked folder and I'm going to call it um, uh, frame hole. Why not? And I'm going to make that as a PNG file. Click Save. Uh, click OK. Come out to the Finder. And that file here is called frame hole. And I'm going to select that, come over into Final Cut, and put that into the graphics folder. Now we're going to end up using that a lot. So now we're in Final Cut. We have all of our, we should have all of our media, so I'm going to create a new sequence and I'm going to call it um, Travel Mat because that's what this is about. I'm going to open up that frame and then I'm going to come down to my media folder and I'm going to take my sample key footage and I'm, if I double click on that, you can see it up here. This is an excellent key shot by a friend of ours named Nate, very skilled dude. Take that sample key and I'm going to drop it into the uh, timeline and Final Cut does you the favor of saying hey you want me to figure this out for you and you say yes and now I have a timeline that exactly matches that media. Now if you recall I said that this is not a um, uh, uh, tutorial about chroma keying so I'm not going to show that. What I've actually done is I've pre-baked this image which is the image with an alpha channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building up the effect that we want to do. We, You have your blue uh, grungy background and very cute you put your shadow on it already um, you gave me the frame the frame only that's important we're gonna need that but what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually move that frame up a couple of layers to make room for some other stuff I'm gonna hit option and the up arrow and I'm gonna bump it up two layers now what I'm gonna do actually I probably only need to bump it up one layer so no actually I do need to bump it up two layers what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the frame hole right here and then so I see I have my black thing and then you wanted to know how do I make 
the drawing clip the appropriate length. Now, when I lay this down, I can see that the drawing clip is too long. And what we really want to do is make the drawing clip the same length as the talking clip. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring the sample key plus alpha up. And I can see that that's actually much shorter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, select the, that transition point, hold down the option key, hit that transition and that transition. And I'm going to use the extend edit key, hit the letter E. And now my backgrounds are the same length as my clip. And I can bring this guy and I'm going to move him over and make room for the thing. It'd be nice if he was looking in, but hey, what do we? What do you expect for free? And uh, then what I have is I have my drawing clip. Now the drawing clip becomes the problem clip because as you originally stated, you want the drawing to fit in the length of the, of the sound bite. So this is how we do that. I'm going to select that dra drawing clip and I have to turn off these little guys here. Uh, call them whatever you want. People have different names for them. I'm going to bring this little chiclet up here, the V1 chiclet. And that means that anything that I do now will drop into that section. So now what I do is I mark an in point at the beginning of the speaking clip, an out point at the end of the speaking clip, and then I pick the drawing clip up, drag it up into the um, viewer, the uh, canvas here, and down here it says fit to fill. Boom. Now what it's done is it's crammed it in there, and I'm now going to actually delete that. That's the extension of the tail. But now I have the drawing that is the same length as the um, talking. But obviously, we have the drawing is uh, no good. So what I want to do is I'm going to um, do a couple of compositing tricks. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to scale it down some using the um, letter A. Um, and then I can grab the corner. Then I can bring this over here and I kind of need to rotate it a wee bit. So I'm going to hover. The nice thing about the using this tool is it, it's contextual. So if I put it on the edge here, it will scale. If I put it on, uh, on a corner, it will scale. On the edge, it will rotate. If I actually get on the edge. And in the middle, it will position. So I can like play with that, get that right where I want it, roughly about what I want. Now, I could crop this by hitting the letter C and bringing this guy in here and this guy in here and we now have the composited shot that you asked for. The little kid drawing the same length as the talking. But look at this, I want to reframe this because I want the kid like more centered in the thing. So that's where it becomes a problem and that's why we made the whole image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take this clip and I'm going to right click on it and say remove some attributes and the attributes I want to remove are the crop. Okay, because I want all that width. But what I want to do now, if I right click on the clip and come down here to composite mode, travel mat alpha, what it does is it looks at the shape of the piece that is underneath it. So if I come over here and I say, uh, how do I do this? Oh, checkerboard. I can see the shape, my black shape. So what the drawing clip does is it will look at the shape of the alpha channel of the clip right below it and it will use that to cut it. So if I were to actually turn off this layer, the frame layer, you would see that the shape fits the frame. Come over here and uh, turn the frame back on and now it looks like it fits in the frame. The beauty of this is I can now select this clip and reframe in the frame without having to recrop it every time. So there I go like that. That's travel mat alpha. The last little tip I want to show you is this. A lot of people don't realize that once they've made the chroma key, I can actually go to this guy and say, I want to still color correct it even though it's already been keyed. So now I have my three-way color corrector. I can pull my black levels down, maybe give it a little life in here, give it some color, make that guy really pop, adjust the overall. You can still color correct after you've done your chroma key. So there it is with the color correction. There it is pale and bleh and color corrected. So that is uh, your Christmas compositing trick and I hope this helps you out.